In the high-stakes chess match of aerial warfare, one move can change the entire game, can't it? Recently, a Chinese J-16 pilot reportedly made just such a move, and it's got everyone talking. In a tense standoff, a single J-16 is said to have locked onto and forced two advanced foreign stealth fighters to retreat. This encounter isn't just a fleeting news headline, it's a powerful signal, suggesting that the era of unquestioned air dominance by stealth aircraft, a concept many have held as gospel, might just be over. For decades, stealth has been the holy grail of aerial combat, promising near invisibility and an insurmountable advantage. But what if that advantage isn't as absolute as we once thought? This incident, if true, challenges that fundamental assumption, indicating a potential paradigm shift in how we perceive modern air power. Let's set the scene, shall we? It's late summer 2024, a hazy afternoon above the hot, crowded skies of the South China Sea. This isn't just any stretch of water, it's a strategically vital region, a global shipping artery, and a geopolitical hotspot. PLA Air Force pilot, Li Chao, callsign, Torch, is cruising at a comfortable 18,000 feet in his J-16. Below him, freighters snake along busy shipping lanes, oblivious to the high-altitude drama unfolding. Above, a KJ-500 early warning aircraft, China's airborne eyes and ears, is quietly painting the entire airspace, linking seamlessly into a vast, integrated network. Ground-based radars have already whispered a warning, two ultra-low signature contacts, heading straight for a restricted air defense zone. What does restricted mean? It means, stay out, plain and simple. No transponders, no radio check-ins, no flight plans. The telltale signs of stealth jets. Foreign, uninvited. Lee's squadron, like any modern Air Force unit, had briefed for scenarios just like this. The J-16 is no relic, quite the opposite. It's China's 4.5-generation workhorse, a formidable multi-role strike fighter derived from the Russian Su-27, Su-30 MKK, but significantly upgraded and rebuilt with indigenous Chinese technology. We're talking advanced avionics, a powerful active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar, an infrared search and track, IRST, system, and every electronic warfare gizmo you can cram onto a twin-fin airframe. While it's not a stealth fighter itself, the J-16 is designed to be clever, and in modern combat, clever can absolutely be deadly. It blends air-to-air -air prowess with robust ground attack and electronic warfare capabilities, making it a versatile platform for contested environments. Lee spots them first, not visually, but as two faint blips on his datalink, about 35 miles out, fading in and out like faulty bulbs. He kicks in the afterburners, pushing the throttles into military power, and begins a rapid climb. The range shrinks to 15 miles, the contacts momentarily vanish from radar again, just as stealth aircraft are designed to do. But Lee's IRST system still glows brightly, heat, after all, cannot hide. At 8 miles, he finally sees them with his own eyes, or rather, the faint shimmer of two gray wedges slicing silently through the haze. He closes the distance to 5 miles. Still no response to his guard frequency calls. Nothing. Then, things get really spicy. One of the foreign jets banks hard, trying to nose on Lee. This is a classic stealth tactic. Present your lowest radar cross-section (RCS) aspect to the adversary, making yourself as small as possible on their radar. But Lee isn't playing by their rules. He answers with an audacious barrel roll, closing the distance to an astonishing canopy-to-canopy -canopy separation of maybe 10, perhaps 15 meters. Imagine that. Flying inverted, directly over your adversary, so close you could practically read their helmet visor. He snaps inverted, flashes his J-16's belly, letting the adversary read the PLA Air Force roundel eye to eye. In that same breathtaking heartbeat, he squeezes the weapons cue, slaving his AESA radar to a high update track. Two diamonds appear on his head-up display, HUD, a solid tone, a lock, not just on one stealth bird, but both. Simultaneously. The J-16's data bus is screaming with information. The KJ-500 is watching from above, feeding data. 
and the sea below, for a fleeting moment, seems to hold its breath. Seconds later, the foreign jets pivot hard south, dropping altitude rapidly, dumping chaff and flares in a desperate attempt to break lock, and skate over the horizon. They haven't come back. Let's be clear. Stealth is not magic, it's math. It's about meticulously engineered angles, radar absorbent coatings, and sophisticated software designed to shrink a jet's radar signature. Shrink, yes, but not erase. At long range, an F-22 or F-35 might look like a bumblebee in a blizzard to radar, almost imperceptible. But at knife fight distance, that bumblebee suddenly looks like a 20-ton, very real fighter jet. Li Chao proved the corollary to this principle. Get close enough, and even a highly capable 4.5 generation jet with modern sensors can force a fight and win the detection game. But the bigger story here, the truly significant takeaway, is the power of integration. The J-16 didn't win alone, it was a team effort. Ground radars, the KJ-500 airborne early warning platform, Lee's own J-16's advanced IRST, and its powerful AESA radar all spoke the same digital language, fusing data in milliseconds. This network sensor fusion effectively shrank the stealth advantage until it was negligible, allowing the J-16 to pinpoint and track targets that would otherwise be invisible. This interconnected web of sensors, often referred to as network-centric warfare, is the new rule. It suggests that if you can see it, and more importantly, if you can share that vision across multiple platforms instantaneously, you can certainly scare it. This incident highlights China's investment in anti-stealth capabilities and network surveillance systems, which could potentially reduce the operational advantage of stealth aircraft, especially in coastal areas where ground-based and airborne assets can work together. Now, let's geek out a bit, but keep our feet firmly on the rudder pedals. The J-16's AESA radar, a critical component in this encounter, boasts roughly 1,200 transmit-receive modules. These modules allow for incredible flexibility in beam steering and multi-target tracking. While its exact detection range against a head-on stealth target remains classified, open-source engineers estimate it to be around 25 to 30 nautical miles if the target's aspect isn't perfectly clean. That's a decent range, but here's where the IRST comes into play. Add the J-16's advanced IRST system, and that detection range stretches even further. Why? Because heat signatures don't lie. Unlike radar, which can be fooled by stealth shaping and radar absorbent materials, IRST passively detects the thermal emissions from an aircraft's engines and airframe, making it a potent tool against stealth at closer ranges. Let's talk about those stealth jets. An F-22's all-aspect RCS is reportedly as low as 0.0001 square meters, roughly the size of a metal marble. An F-35 is slightly larger, around 0.0015 square meters, comparable to a golf ball. But here's the crucial part. Those figures are for optimal angles. Rotate that marble or golf ball by just 30 degrees, and its radar signature can grow to the size of a tennis ball. Rotate it another 20 degrees, and you're looking at a beach ball. Lee, with his daring maneuver, basically parked off the beam of both foreign jets, presenting them at their worst possible angle for stealth, and held that lock long enough to matter. Could the stealth pilots have done more? Maybe, they certainly had options. They could have tried to stay beyond visual range, where their stealth advantages are maximized. They could have employed standoff jammers, specialized electronic warfare aircraft like the EA-18G Growler, designed to disrupt enemy radars from a safe distance. Growlers are essentially flying electronic warfare platforms, capable of blinding enemy radars and communications with powerful jamming pods. They could also have coordinated with escort growlers, which are designed to accompany strike packages and provide electronic protection. But they didn't. That's the human element at play. Sometimes it's bravado, sometimes it's miscalculation, and sometimes, it's a bit of both. Of course, when CCTV, China's state broadcaster, aired the segment, they did so with cinematic flair. We saw slow-motion footage of Lee's helmet, a thumping soundtrack, and subtitles that practically high-fived the audience. But notably absent were any independent telemetry, HUD tape from the J-16, or third-party confirmation. Skeptics, quite rightly, cried propaganda. 
And fair enough. Every Air Force, every nation, curates its legends. It's a part of projecting strength and narrative. But dismissing the entire story as pure fiction might miss the point. Beijing wanted two powerful messages broadcast, whether every detail was verifiable or not. First, our pilots are aggressive, highly trained, and aren't afraid to get up close and personal. Second, our integrated sensors and systems can pry open even the most advanced stealth shell. These messages are designed for both domestic consumption and international deterrence. Whether the foreign jets were F-35s, F-22s, or another nation's stealth platform is almost irrelevant to the narrative itself. The story is now in the wild, and narratives, as we all know, have a profound impact. They shape budgets, influence military deployments, and are a key component of deterrence strategy. And what a ripple it caused. Within weeks of the CCTV broadcast, open-source flight trackers began noticing a shift. Fewer US F-22 sorties were detected out of Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, a crucial strategic location just 400 miles from mainland China. Instead, there was an increase in F-15EX and F-16CJs flying with larger jammer packages. Coincidence? Possibly, but militaries tend to vote with their fuel tanks and their deployment schedules. Kadena has been undergoing a transition, phasing out its aging F-15CD, Eagles, and rotating in various fighters like F-22s, F-35s, and F-16s. The appearance of more F-15EXs, which are advanced 4.5-gen fighters with enhanced electronic warfare capabilities, and F-16CJs, specifically designed for suppression of enemy air defenses, SEED, with specialized jammer pods, suggests an adaptation. If stealth is suddenly perceived as less stealthy, you adapt your tactics. You fly different routes, you add standoff support from electronic warfare aircraft, and you rewrite your tactical playbooks. That costs money, time, and significant political capital, precisely what Beijing hopes to extract without firing a single shot. It's a strategic victory in the information space. All the advanced radars and integrated networks in the world don't help if the human behind the stick freezes under pressure. Lee's barrel roll inside 15 meters wasn't software, it was pure guts, honed muscle memory, and an absolute, unwavering confidence in his aircraft's limits and his own abilities. Western pilots typically train for 250 to 350 hours a year, PLA Air Force top-tier brigades are now pushing 250 to 280 hours, a significant increase from the 120 hours they logged a decade ago. The gap is narrowing, and fast. When you combine comparable, intensive flight hours with cutting-edge integrated sensors, you get a pilot who can not only detect but also hold a lock on two ghosts at once. That's the crucial takeaway for every Air Force still budgeting for tomorrow. Training hours, the sheer dedication to honing human skill, matter every bit as much as advanced stealth coatings or next-generation avionics. It's the synthesis of man and machine that truly defines air superiority. If you found this breakdown useful, hit that like button so the algorithm knows others might too. Drop a comment below. Do you buy the J-16's double lock, or do you think it's a brilliant piece of clever propaganda? And if you want more combat aviation deep dives, subscribe, no fluff, just facts, and the occasional barrel roll. The sky, it seems, is no longer a sanctuary, not for anyone. A single J-16, a platform that on paper might be considered older than its fifth-generation adversaries, just reminded the world that stealth is conditional, and dominance, no matter how absolute it seems, is always temporary. Sensors evolve, pilots adapt, and yesterday's invisible aces can quickly become tomorrow's cautionary tale. Li Chao's intercept, whether it echoes loudly through history books or remains a whispered legend, delivered a message that's already loud and clear. In the intricate chessboard above the South China Sea, every single square is contested, every piece can be taken, and the next game, with its ever-evolving rules, is always just beginning.